Okay, so we've talked about the hygiene aspect of it, the cleanliness and then the water purification. We've talked about quality, the quality of the water that we're going to use, and we've talked about the quality of the tea and how we blend it. So now we're going to talk about technique. And the technique is really quite simple once you know what you're doing, but you should follow these steps and try to do the job as well as you possibly can. So first of all, we use not one kettle but two. Um, we've gone through a lot of trouble with this water. You see how, how many times we've filtered it, and how we sterilised all the bottles. So having gone to all this trouble, we're not going to boil it twice. You must warm the pot. And we warm the pot with boiling water. So we'll boil a kettle full of water. But we won't then reboil what's in this kettle to use to make the tea, because this one is for the sole purpose of warming the pot. So we'll put that on, and the timing becomes quite critical. While we're waiting for that to boil, I'll tell you a little bit about why and why not to put the milk in first. It's an age-old debate and there is a reason or there was a reason why you did it. When tea drinking first became popular in this country, crockery, earthenware, china was not of the same quality that it is now. And if you poured boiling water into some of it, it would crack. And so people put the milk in the cup first. The cups were far more um, delicate than a teapot. The cup, if you poured boiling hot tea into it, might crack. So you put the milk in first, it cooled it down a little bit and there was no, uh, no problem. Crockery technology improved and increased and in time it became a way of insulting your host. If you poured the milk in first you were implying that their, croc their crockery was not up to standard and of course you didn't want to do that, so everyone poured the milk in last. That is an age-old thing, it's long ago, nobody's bothered anymore, and um, it's a question then of do you want your tea hot, do you want to cool it slightly by putting a metal spoon in it and stirring it. So ideally you should put the milk in first, because when you pour the tea in it stirs itself, you get a better solution. Now, whether or not you choose to put the milk in last for your own reasons, that's up to you. Some people do, some people don't. But it's not a thing, it's not anything you need to worry about. Do it first or second. Just don't put it in the teapot. Don't put milk in the teapot. Now this kettle's about to boil. I'm going to make two pots of tea and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. One by simply putting the leaves in the second way we'll use an infuser. So we just warm the pot. Doesn't take very much. Put the lid back on. Let that water stand in there while you boil another kettle full this time this is the stuff you're going to use. Now you think about all the processes that this water has been through to make it as clean and pure as you possibly can. You don't want it straight out of the tap round here. If you take it straight out of the tap, you tend to get a scum on the surface of the water in your cup, and that you do not want. Now I'm making two pots, so I'm boiling a full kettle full. This will take a moment. And all the time that this one's boiling, the teapots are warming up.
any job that you do, any job at all, has five main stages, maybe six. Those stages begin with inspiration. The inspiration, you have the idea of the job that you're going to do. Now once you've had the idea of how you're going to, what job you're going to do, you've got to think about how you're going to do it. So the next stage is cogitation. Inspiration, cogitation. And while you're thinking about it, you're going to find all the things that you don't know about. So you've got to find out about them. Education. Inspiration, cogitation, education. Then comes the most important thing, and you've seen the most important thing while we've been doing this. And the single most important thing about any job is preparation. Once you've prepared properly, you've got all the gear together, you know exactly what you're doing, your mind is prepared, you're physically prepared, then, and only then, comes application. And you'll see in a moment the application will take place. Once the application has taken place, admiration, if you're lucky, appreciation. Those people who see the job that you've done or experienced, for example, tea that you've made, will appreciate and admire the effort that you've gone to. So, inspiration, cogitation, education, preparation, application, admiration. Let's hope that works. Pause just for a moment while this kettle boils. Now the pots are nice and warm. So, caddy spoon, tea blend. Remember this is the Assam and Rahuna blend that we did earlier. Of this teapot, two spoons full will fill the um, inner full pot of this tea. Straight into the pot, loose. When you pour the boiling water on it, it will infuse. However, there is another way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to use an infuser. Now this, much as I don't like them, this is a bit like making a giant tea bag. You put your tea inside. This is a first flush Darjeeling we're going to make. I'll get as much tea into this as I can because it's a slightly bigger pot, so three in there. And you screw it together. And each part of this, the top and the bottom, is uh, pierced with very fine holes. And you pop that into the pot. When the boiling water goes on it, it will infuse in that way. Some people say it's better because you don't have to use a tea strainer when you pull the tea out. We will anyway, but we'll see. And here's the kettle boiling now. Now when you put the water in, this water needs to be on a rolling boil. So that's what's happening at the moment. The water is boiling on the boil. And as it turns off, we pour it directly into the teapot. And this is the point at which it becomes time critical. That water is still boiling. You don't want to put your hands in there. Get the lid back on as quickly as you possibly can, and this is the important thing. Get those cosies on there to keep it warm. Not just one cosy. Remember what we said, we're going to over-engineer this. We'll put the metal cosy on this one and the muff cosy, which will tie up. And over the top of it goes the thermal cosy. And it's only going to last three to five minutes, I'm going to run out of tea cosies. So on this one, we 
we've got the metal one, we'll just put this granny's knitted woolly one over the top of it and this will keep it sufficiently warm. I could put a thermal one over the top of that but we won't do that for today. Now as I've said this is time critical. We've got to get this to the place where we're going to serve it within the next two three minutes. And we're going to take it. You're going to see now having gone through hygiene, quality and technique now a little bit of theatre because this is important. And it's important to me when I serve tea that I use this 130 year old Irish linen on my tray, not just one but two, stops the teapot sliding about and we'll get this very quickly through to where we're going to serve. Off we go. Pour it out of the spout! <laughs> 